know what I'm saying? Know what I'm talking about? What it do? Brand new show. Yeah. This one, this one has to have its own intro. Yeah, we do. We don't know if we're going to call it Chingo Chats or we have no idea. But today we wanted to add just a quick little 30 minute episode for all the patrons. This is a patron exclusive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to shoot the shit. I think Rob wants to ask me some questions. But uh, leave your politics at the door. Ain't no politics on this one. Yeah, that's kind of the, the concept. And we talked about it at the end of uh, the last Patreon exclusive. But this one's going to go up on Monday. So you're going to get this on February 1st. And initially, we, I don't, we haven't even really talked about it. But this one, well, we have talked about this one going on the $10 tier, which is the new tier that you guys will see on the Patreon page that you're welcome to upgrade to or new patrons will be able to sign up for mm-hmm. automatically. But this first one uh, might just go ahead and make it available to everybody and let, okay. and let okay. them know that, hey, this one's going to be just for the $10 tier going forward. But we'll see what happens at the end of this episode. But uh, yeah, sure. we want to sure. give as much value as possible. We're you know already creating content several days a week, and we want to just maximize it with a, a variety of thoughts and ideas, not just from guests, but from us as well. Yeah, because we like podcasting. And uh, hey, let's just have fun with it. And it, I think it's fun that we just talk about everything else. But, you know. Yeah. Like, especially right now, because we just finished the political podcast, mm-hmm. and you're like, all right, that's the last thing I want to talk about right yeah, now. Yeah, because I'll I be getting mad. But so anyway, yeah, we're going to switch it over. New day, new episode, <laughs> new show. Who this? Yeah. And like you said, we're going to work on that wall, maybe putting something else like this. Yeah, you know? different background, different set. Different visuals, you know, different lighting, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to be like Brendan Schaub. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to have multiple shows. Dude, I actually saw the... So their control room is like in the middle and they have a door on each wall where it's like King of the Sting, you walk into that door. Blow the Belt, you walk out of that door. Fighter and the Kid, you walk out of that door. And they just have a control room in the middle to where you can just control all, all three of the rooms. But is there like a window between yep. control room? Yep, control room and all the rooms. Where is, where is this at? Cali? Yeah, some studio there. I was like, oh, that's cool. I always thought, I wondered about how they did it. Because uh, Theo Vaughn, he's in uh, Nashville. He is, yeah. He's been doing a lot of remote stuff with them. So they got to zoom in? Or mm-hmm. what? Mm. It's not nearly as fun. Yo, they had my homeboy Jelly Roll on there. Did you see that I did. Episode? I listened to it. I, I, I skipped it until you said, man, you got to listen to it. Man, look here, bro. Jelly Roll is a star. That dude is like, to me, he's like beyond music. Because, you know, charisma... That was a great fucking episode. He just shoots the shit. He can like relate with different people right. about different stuff. You know, did you enjoy it? I did, yeah. And I didn't how did I not know who he was? Dude, Jelly Roll is amazing. Like I mean, I've been knowing him. I think I met him through Little White. So you have like this um this whole other lane in the in the rap game where you got like Yellow Wolf. Love you know, Yellow Wolf. I like um, Yellow Wolf. <clears throat> like uh uh, struggle jennings he does a lot of stuff with jelly roll and you know Lil white you, you know down with three six and i didn't really i wasn't too familiar it kind of reminds me of almost like the uh, mexican rapper scene yeah. in a way except these are like the southern white boy rappers but they go hard man jelly roll he he put out an independent album with a uh, tech nines label strange music are you familiar with them yeah so you know how they do it independently yeah, yeah. strange music popped on my radar a long time ago when i was um touring doing the rap shit so there was a really smart promoter out that way named um texas t and uh he was he was in boise though so he's originally from el paso but he was uh, staying in boise and uh he had me sell out a bunch of shit in that region right so texas t would always put me up on game he'd be like yo you fuck with tech nine and strange music i'm like i know about him a little bit he's like bro Pay attention to what Tech Nine and Strange Music is doing. He's like, they, they're based out of Kansas City. They got a warehouse with all the merch and the VIP price stuff. They, they like pre-sell VIP before they even get to the market. They drive in with a couple U-Hauls. Eventually, it was like a little tour bus. So they were doing like how Selena was. What? Like how Selena was like in the early 2000s. Or if you watch that, that Netflix show they did. So long story short... They weren't really dealing with promoters. They were basically getting a tour route, getting the venues, working direct with the venues, and they pretty much getting the door, pretty much. So you're packing all these kids in these secondary markets, like Greeley, Colorado. He wasn't hitting L.A. and Seattle off the rip. It was like off the beaten path. You know what I'm saying? Like little secondary markets. But uh, Jelly Roll did an album with them and... You know they they do it big. Their music videos were legit. Yeah. So it's a it's on a mainstream level. It's like polished. It's legit. 
Yeah, he had a really interesting story too. Like he, I mean, just if you would go listen to it or, or look up for one of his interviews, he's had a pretty tough upbringing, and then he just kind of turned it around when he had his daughter. I think it was he had a kid, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta figure this shit out. Yeah, he started making a name for himself. Um, and in a nutshell, from what I understand about his his backstory is, you know, he got into some trouble. He had to be a street capitalist a little bit for yeah. a minute. Yeah, and he was uh, entertaining folks, rapping in jail. And then he, he got out and just started making noise because he's nice. He's nice with the lyrics, you know, he could rap, so. He's got that Joey Diaz story, you know, did it out of, you know, jail or necessity of those hard days. Can you mm. imagine right now, like, being locked up and then just, like, Joey Diaz starting to write jokes and that's how you come up being a comedian Shit. just performing for that uh, audience? George Perez, he didn't start in jail, but um, you know George Perez's story? No. <sighs> Bro. George Perez, in a nutshell, not only is he like one of the dopest comedians, period, out right now. Um, he's out of he's out of uh LA area. So he started this is how he came up, and I'm gonna give y'all the like the the story how I recall it, because I got to work with him, so he broke it down. He um he went to like along with a friend or something like that to open mic. And uh, he, it was like, he ended up getting up there and started roasting people. And I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jeff, uh, what's his name? Jeff Garcia, I think, comedian. I think that's his name. He's real good at improv. He's, you know, he's a veteran from the Mexican comedy scene. So he was like, dude, you're fucking funny. I think he ended up beating him. I think George like ended just hood funny. Ended up beating Jeff or something with the battle. He's like, dude, you need to roll with me. So he like taught him the game a little bit. And he ended up on Wilmer Valderrama's show on MTV, Yo Mama. Oh, no shit. A little roasting show back in the day on MTV. And, um, you know, you know how MTV used to be music videos and they started to diversify. Viacom. So he gets on that show and I think he ends up winning it. And some dude he had allegedly got into some beef or something the dude ended up i think hurt pretty bad and he like was like saw hey man that's the guy because he had pretty much what gotten, he got in the way like the a bad fight went down homeboy you know they couldn't they didn't know who names nothing and then he's like oh shit that's the fucking guy <laughs> so something about that person had like all these plugs with the prosecutor and had all these little connects his sister was like cool with the DA type of shit and they they got him threw him in there and then he did his uh his comedy in there you did it a gig with him or how did you yeah well I, psh, how did I meet him <sighs> I think it might have been it had to have been some time it might have been Mar, Mar, no I think he brought Martin because I did the Long Beach um Laugh Factory and uh so anyway I've, I've worked with him a couple times so we hired him to roll with us uh, we did Fresno, and we did uh, Long Beach, and uh, he rose with Xavier. That's the producer for his podcast and Sam Tripoli. Mm -hmm. So George Perez, bro, man, he's like a black belt. He's like a master. He taught me a whole bunch of shit. So he was giving me a lot of tips. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah, which, I mean, I guess we can kind of say as a surprise. I've been seeing a lot of comments about that collaboration, but we're going to have the Tinfoil Hack crew in here one at a time on uh, Red Pill Tamales, so that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, since we're on the subject, I kind of want to go and, and, and just explore the comedy story real quick, because I don't ever think that mm -hmm. you kind of like sat down and said it in detail. And, and just kind of the story all together of, of everything, because the first like dozen episodes of RPT it kind of went together with what we were talking about politically and then how you were, you know, in the industry and in music and then being blackballed for, you know, for as long as you can remember. Mm -hmm. But as far as comedy, how does, how do you just, how do you start doing comedy? Well, I always wanted to do comedy since I was a little kid and I saw uh, Eddie Murphy doing Delirious and Raw. So in the eighties, Eddie Murphy was the biggest thing. You was, remember watching that? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, like it was yesterday. It was so classic. I was a little kid, and I'm just seeing this dude up there being cool as a motherfucker. It was like the culture at the time. It was the 80s. It was like hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? You're listening to like Public Enemy and, 
you know, these are the films and the things, you know, Eddie Murphy, biggest star. He was on Saturday Night Live, which um, I just kind of, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't really watch that SNL back then. So it was kind of like, I kind of remember him doing the buckwheat thing, but he did like Beverly Hills Cop and those stand up specials. Like all the teenage girls, like my older sisters are like, oh, my God, this is so funny. They're like quoting it. It was just pop culture. So I was like, man, that's a really cool job. I'd love to do that. So I graduate college and our college radio thing was doing really well. But I was like, man, I'm paying rent out here. You drove by San Antonio? Yeah. I was like, I got this apartment. What is this fucking college radio shit? They don't pay. <laughs> so, um, hold on. Speaking of this management right there. Yes, my mom. Oh, <laughs> mama bling. I have to call her back. Um, so I told one of my DJ homies, like, man, man, I'm gonna move back to Houston. He's like, what are you gonna do, man? You gonna do the DJ thing out there? Cause he's like, we already starting to make noise. Like we got gigs, you know, mixtapes and everything. We interviewing people, you know, paid our dues type of thing. And uh, we're getting some traction. So he's like, what you gonna do? I'm like, man, then I'm going to do stand-up. I'm going to do comedy. He's like, what? Comedy? It's almost like stay in your lane. Yeah. It's like, we're already doing this. We already done put in some couple years. And you want to go to comedy? I was like, yeah, you know, the Chingo Bling thing. You know, the comedy, rap, and see, maybe I'll do some stand-up or something. So I went and met up with Juan Villarreal. He had a show he was doing. It might have been like a monthly or every other week. Um... Out there or here? No, in Houston. Okay. So I had moved back, and I was like, well, ain't nobody hiring me. So you I'm, see, that, that, that's like that gap that I'm talking about. We'll, t- we'll tell these stories, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. How do you go from, uh, watch it be your mom again, like, no, it's no, important. No, no. no, just checking. How do you go from it being that, you know, you're in the predicament of, like, man, I'm paying, you know, college radio, I'm, I'm already got, I'm assuming you had a lease, maybe, unless you were doing month to month, and then. I did a six-month lease, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Rosewood. Something apartments off of Wurzbach and I-10. Do you ever go around there and be like, this is yeah. I started? Do you I'm really? Like, Fuck them. <laughs> because they put that shit on my credit. The stupid cleanup fee. <laughs> when I bounced, I cleaned up. I took all my stuff out of that little apartment, a little one bedroom. And uh, I might have left like one bag of trash or something. Man, these assholes. They were sending the fucking letter to the campus address they had on me. So it was going to the little mailbox. You were never even getting it? I had already graduated. Right, right, right. It's going to some little bullshit mailbox at the student center. <laughs> Your little dorm mailbox. Yeah, at the student center at Trinity University. So how the fuck I'ma know? So now I'm making now I'm making a little bit of bread in the rap shit. Um, starting to do some shows and my CDs are selling and this and that. I'm growing my CD list, my uh, record store list. Working with my sister and a couple other family members. My cousin Madeline and shit. She was. The merch girl and, you know, my sister Pat would do a stint with us. She'd, you know, go hard for about two years and then she might have to, like, focus on the kids for a hot minute. But, um, you know, uh, what the fuck was my point with that? Well, Hold oh, the letter. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't getting it. So now I'm making money in the rap game. I'm high, y'all. I smoke weed right before this shit. You know, uh, CBD. Alleg- yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. So now I'm trying to buy a house. And they're like, all right, let's pull your credit up. I'm like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) Rosewood Apartments, cleaning fee. So I had to end up calling them. And they're like, well, we sent you letters. I'm like, yeah, to the student center. Like, I had already, well, we didn't have an address. Like, fuck, man. Anyway, I had to be like, pay that bullshit. Like, here's your stupid fucking collections, getting calls from the collections people about Uh, a bag of trash. So annoying. So let me buy this house. You know, flex on them. No cap. <laughs> you know this. You know this. This this gonna be like that. You know, Uncle jo- Uncle Joey story time meets meets um, Vlad TV without the snitching. Meets Joe Budden podcast. Yeah, man, that's that's the that's definitely the idea. I'm glad you see that. We're gonna need a wall. Oh, this gonna be like drink champs. Yes, we need a wall. That's what I was about to say. We need a wall of booze because if you're gonna be hitting something, I gotta be sipping on something, hitting and sipping. Man, it's a beer right there. Yeah, there is, but you know what? Okay. I don't even want to call you out like that, but I popped one last night uh-huh. because we were here extra what, it late. Was nasty, dude. It's from it was October. 
Uh-huh. It, it had not only was it from October, it had expired in October. And usually I'm Ooh. like, usually I'm like, hey, beer stays good. It was a nasty for a lot longer than the expiration date, but it tasted funny because I had a lot of those before, and I was like, huh. something's off. I was like, that doesn't taste like what this usually tastes like. And I just I looked at the bottom of the can. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty old. So you got to go by the expiration date. Typically, typically, okay. yeah, makes sense. Anyway. We do need to definitely get some uh, like that for the next set over here to our left or to our right. Yeah, yeah I'd be doing red wine normally. Red, red wine. It's a different type of buzz. It is. I like it. I like wine as well. It's and just then, more sugar. Really? Because, man, I feel like I'm drinking bread when I drink beer. We'll get like, some, it's just like you get bloated. Yeah. Okay. You got gluten intolerance now? I'm not saying I'm a soy boy, but like, I'll put it to you like this. When we're hanging with like... Like our Mexican Mexican family, yeah. Like it's gonna be nothing but Spanish. You might get hit in the head with a piñata. Yeah. Like it's gonna be kids and shit. They tired and sleepy, and it's it's weeding outside and they're barbecuing, like that kind of party. Um, they gonna bring you beers. Yeah. Like you need to come over here and kick it with the men. You but know? isn't it usually like Modelo's or yeah, shit like Dos that. Dos yeah, stuff, we, uh, yeah, like Modelo. Modelo's corn stuff based, like you know. That. It's but like, La pinche bola también. That's, that's, bola también. Bro, I know. That's all I used to drink too, man, when I was younger. And that taste now, if I try to drink it, it's like rusted nails in a can. Damn, son. Let, sh- hey, man, we're still trying to get a, <laughs> a sponsorship. <laughs> I'm just but you, you know me, though. I am pretty like these days. You know, I've worked with a, a several um, beer companies. I love when you work with um. Don't get me wrong. The big ones pay really well. Yeah. I cannot complain. I'm not mad. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's statements <laughs> are his statements, y'all. Look, all right. For starters, after two or three, my paycheck ain't going to be affected by <laughs> your opinion, sir. After two or three, in all fairness, it doesn't even matter anymore. I just, I should have rephrased it. I can't start with that. All I'm saying is they pay really well. They're generous. Yeah. They definitely look out for you. Um, I enjoy working with both for different reasons. The craft folks, they're usually local. They're usually like small business trying to come up. You know, I feel really bad for the craft brewers during this lockdown. Yeah. Because here in Texas, you got TABC. You know, that's the organization. That's like a legal, but they also the enforcement side. So basically, they're the ones that regulate, you know, bust up in a bar. They up to no goods. They, you know, you can't be carrying in here. What all type of weird shit y'all got going on in, at this spot? So TABC basically regulates the craft brewers and tells them, hey, man, you can only do one six pack to go per person. Or, hey, man, you got to have a food truck out here because y'all can't be 50 percent, 51 percent profits out of beer. Yeah. You know, they regulate. So I feel bad because the brewers can have people come in. You know, you got all this overhead. You got to pay this rent. You got landlords. You trying to promote your shit. Your shit ain't open. <laughs> I think I want now that they the were dis- talking. Yeah, the distributor holding your money. Yeah. You sold out at the grocery store. But anyway. No, I was thinking about beer again. I was like, I kind of wanted to actually get a couple Bud Lights or Budweiser's and see if I can taste the nostalgia of my youth. <laughs> no shit. You must have really um, drank. I drank a lot. No shit. Drink a lot in like well, mm-hmm. senior year in co- uh, senior year in high school, and then some in college. Damn. So, in in my rap days, it was a lot of like liquor and tequila yeah. and beers and. Dude, it, that was like I later. Can't even do it, man. Now you don't really drink. I mean, even though you, you found mean, ranch waters to be pretty. Uh, yeah, tasty. like don't get me wrong. Like when it's time to sip, it's just I I got burnt out on it. Yeah. Like the the cost versus benefit. Sure. So that's how I look at it now. Like when I was like young and more just, you know, you in, you socially awkward, you're insecure, you're in some club and you got you about to perform and you being a control freak and anxious like, man, these opening acts really need to mix their songs down better <laughs> or they really need to rehearse because they're fucking up the vibe. I still got to go on three more groups after this. I'm mad. It's this many groups, but the promoter charged them $250 each or some crate, whatever. Just random. You want to be the one right before him? That's a thousand. What? Or, or whatever, right? Because now they 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 reimbursing themselves from the deposit yeah. and flights and all this shit, hotels they got for me. Right. 
and we used to roll with, you know, DJ, road manager, you know, hype man, all this stuff. So we were trying to put on, you know, uh, uh, the best show we could with the budgets motherfuckers had. Otherwise, shit, well, we need a couple backup dancers, uh, uh, some musicians, you know, but you got to kind of graduate up to that level. And this kind of ties back into the uh, Tech Nine Strange Music. Okay. Yeah, because, dude, it's, it should have, could have, would have, but it's like, man, I wish I would have explored more of putting in the work, of finding the venues, and finding a street team, and finding a way before Facebook to get the word out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, come up with a game plan where, like, are you making posters? What's the system? How you get the street team? How'd you meet them? Did you vet them? Do you well, think that you know, came to like that? Because you you do do that, and you did end up doing that. But do you think it just came later? Is, is what is that what you're saying? You well, I did it in sooner? comedy, right? Comedy. You, oh, you never did that in music? Not really. I, I I threw a show. Man, we threw one show in McAllen. Man, we packed it out like seven hundred youngsters. We had everybody. Damn. We had everybody on that lineup. Bash, Lucky, or like Juan Gotti, Grim. Everybody was in that bitch. Juan Villarreal was the host. Uh, Man, we made some bread. It was lit. It was packed. We sold a gang of merch. We had the Miles backstage for all the artists. You know, we booked all the hotel rooms. Uh, I produced a commercial. We went down there, ran a spot on the radio. Uh, went down a couple days early, put up posters, made sure we were seen at the mall. Hey, where y'all from? This and that. Hey, we got a show. And man, if we had, it's just shoulda, coulda, woulda. Thank yeah. you. Thankfully, uh, we're still in the game. It's constantly evolving. You know, we're getting into this digital media space, the, yeah. the podcasting space. And uh, shit, that's proven to be a great way to have a platform and create content, communicate and have an audience. And Yeah. And this is what I tell people all the time, too, when they would ask me about like like business stuff. Like people that know me well know that I, I ran and operated and whatever, co-founded a brick and mortar business for a few years, which is hard as fuck, man. Anytime I hear anybody talking about, mm. I want to open a brick and mortar business. Ooh. You get that, you get that Corona anal swab yep. type of sensation. You're like, ooh, that reminds me of the, yes. of, the, of the COVID test with the, the, the new one. Not to say that I've taken that one, but I read about it. And just by reading it, I feel like you can actually feel it. <laughs> and I mean, all I got to say is like, do your, your due diligence to have a plan and all your forecasts and all that boring shit figured out to the best of your ability. But to go back to the main point is, you know, you got to be a, everyone that's listening or watching this, you have to look at yourself as a media company first and then whatever you're providing second. So if you have a coffee shop, you're a media company who also makes coffee. If you're a t-shirt company, you're a media company who also sells t-shirts. Mm. We're a media company who actually puts out media, podcasting, you know, music, uh. comedy, whatever. And that was true 10 years ago. And it's definitely more true now. Wow. That's just the way you have to look at it. Before I forget, mental note, how much you charge me to help me with a business plan? All right, back to the show. Okay, go. We're going to talk after. Okay. Uh, because I am currently doing my research on this whole other lane. Endeavor. This whole other lane. Yeah. We, we can't tell you what it is. Nope. Because I don't want my name or face on it. Um, I want to make sure that I'm diversified and un, uncancelable. Yeah. Because I like my freedom speech. Yeah. Uh, freedom speech tour, Naples. We coming, February 10th. Let's see, I got to spam y'all, man. I got to promote. <laughs> On all the like, shows, like, you got Rob, to. like Rob said, man, we a media company. Well, yeah, that's true. So, so anyway, working on this business plan, and I definitely want to. Uh, I'm serious about you assisting me in that because I know you've done it. You're good at it, uh, and you understand it from the perspective that I'm approaching it. Yeah, where, where it's got that media component, and you got to have a, a good business attorney too, which I found and still have. Um, because they help you in the formation of the LLC and help you in the, the formation of like your, um, I forgot what they call it now, but it, it's like basically... S-Core and all that? Yeah, well, you, you form your LLC or S-Corp or whatever it is, and then you have like your, your articles of like formation, which is like, who are the business partners? Like, what's the equity in the business? How is it split? Like what the, it, uh, what do they call that? Like the hierarchy, the... Um like the little amendments and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all in this book. And the book itself, like I have it. It's a, it's literally, it's a, it's like a fucking Bible of like mm -hmm. all your documents, and it's like your articles of formation or there something like that. Yeah, yeah, that. And you know, you, you, everything is, and it has to be really precise because in this litigious society we live in, it yeah. doesn't matter if you're in business with your family or friends, uh, or whoever. 
that the, they have to be so painted, you know, to the T, you know, cross your T's, dye your I's with who's the president, who's the CEO, what are their roles, what are their, all these different things that you talk about with your business, business partner, whoever that is, and then the business starts rolling and you're like, man, I did not define these things well enough for some oh, of these yeah. people. No, that's very, very wise. Everything he just said, extremely on point and smart because, I mean, nine times out of 10, you're not really going to have major issues with the people you do business with yeah 99 percent of the time people kind of clear on like what it is like well i'm a contractor or or we we 50 50 on this or whatever it is um it's, and it's not until you run into problems too yeah it's like well who owns what assets yeah um so on what role what position and etc but you you can't overlook it too much just that way you get it on paper and you get the emotions out the way Mm -hmm. and that way it's like oh it's not personal you know what i'm saying it's not personal at all no we're just going by articles of business (laughs) it's laid out in this book yeah and that way because business is supposed to be fun like i believe depending on how many you're able to juggle i believe like if you do it this way where it's just clear and set and everybody knows their part and you got your systems down to how it's gonna run like what happens when the order gets placed yeah and whoop de woo customer experience yeah and that whole thing and then once you've actually got that in place and i know because i did a poll on my personal instagram about what what are you trying to do in 2021 like what are you really focusing on and 90 percent of the people that replied which i think i got like 50 replies and at least 90 of them 80 to 90 percent were become an entrepreneur like work for myself like develop this business plan or you know put the, put together this idea for a business that i've had for years and it goes back to the whole covid thing is like you see now more than ever. If you if you ever wanted to be an entrepreneur, have a business, and you never never got to it, you look at it now. It's twofold. It's a double edged sword because it's super hard because you might be in one of the businesses that need the PPP and can't get it, or you might be the business that can still not Amazon exactly, but a business similar to it that can still operate right. And you want to have that shit under your own control, not wait for this you know employer let me go. I got furloughed or whatever. Like if you got it down and it works, and it's almost in a sense like pandemic proof. Man, you're so good right now. Keyword pandemic proof. I think about that. And cancel proof. Oh, man. I think about both of those. Yeah. Um, Pandemic proof. For example, he mentioned brick and mortar. It could definitely be an added hurdle when you're having to have the boutique that has to pay the rent but has limited capacity and now has to be creative rolling with the punches. You know what I'm saying? Like this curveball called a pandemic. And let's just say real estate. Okay, you want to have rental properties or Airbnbs. Well, what happens when it's a lockdown or a pandemic? Your tourism is fucked up. Ain't no travel. Travel's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, hotels like rental, Airbnb, that's, that takes a hit, um, et cetera. Oh, food. Oh, you want to have a food thing? Okay. All right, bet. So you already had to go up against Chick-fil-A and everybody <laughs> else and the food court across the street and the food trucks. So now you also want to factor in your fucking rent. Yeah. And how are you going to negotiate with your landlord when he's charging you 100% of your rent, but you only get you at 50% capacity? Ooh. And those, those commercial leases, man, you got to read those with a fine tooth comb with your business attorney. Because if you don't understand, like, what are you getting, like, tenant improvement allowance? And, like, what's your, the, the taxes? And is it, like, all your trash and water and shit included? And sometimes I've, I've heard horror stories of people just overlooking a lot of that stuff and then getting totally railed with everything like um my family my mom my sisters marisol and i marisol had a rental uh before i even met her um that game that whole hustle of ha- being a landlord mm-hmm. and having tenants what happens when that moratorium you know what i'm saying where people or oh, you got like these organizations i heard this one story where a gentleman passed his wife took over the the lease, whatever. Or his girlfriend, wife, probably wife. <clears throat> the landlord, it's like 10 units. He can't collect on that one because she the, the lady is being backed by an organization that says, you know, tenants' rights, we're working pro bono, we getting these uh, grants or whatever, we're representing her, y'all got to cough up money for y'all's representation, but she ain't paying shit. And it's added up. So now he's behind on his shit. Yeah. So it just fucking trickles. Yeah. The the real estate thing's always been fascinating to me. And 
I know you're super into it and you guys are involved in it and, and that's great and all. Uh, but in a time like this, it goes back to like the brick and mortar thing too, or even just a restaurant in general. How many, and I know a handful of people who have rentals and unfortunately have tenants who have been hit hard by this pandemic and they can't get their shit paid for. Well, that was a concern. And then you also got to worry about people wanting to renew or not. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to have an occupancy and now you got to hustle that up, you know, get it rented or whatever. Yeah. Um, thankfully, we haven't had no problem That's with our, our people. That's good. They I, Apparently, they're still working or something, but um, they've got it covered, thank goodness. Otherwise, that would have been on this coconut right here. <laughs> <laughs> this little sellout right here. Um, so I get it. Like, it's one of those, like, man, you don't want uh, people that have to pay rent. You don't want them to be shit out of luck. But no, then you also sure. got to think, like, I know I know a cat that's a commercial landlord. So the thing about watch your lease with your commercial ten, uh, landlord, it's like, well, I hope, you know, like my homeboy, I hope he's not too affected by this. Yeah. If, if all his tenants couldn't pay. And now he's like, shit, I thought commercial real estate was going to be pandemic proof. Yeah. Nah. <sighs> Now, imagine the buildings and offices and stuff that, like, aren't going back to work. Like, these big companies that are like, oh, remote fucking work, finally. People have been saying for years, why do you always have to be at an office, right? There's mm -hmm. so many things. Most of the time, your days consist of, like, meetings and almost no work, and all those meetings could have been summed up in 30 minutes. It's all headed towards stay your ass in the house <laughs> and have you a little um, VR type of situation. We're going to be hologramming. Yeah. I found my old book, Ray Kurzweil. It's called... Um, the Singularity? This one is called The Age of Spiritual Machines. Okay. So he's like predicting stuff. He's way off though. Oh, yeah? He was saying like, by 2019, you know, the shit he was describing is like, mm, Like what? Give me like what? Well, it was like, like computers are going to be even more immersed. Like some stuff you won't know if it's a screen or not type of thing. Like just way more advanced. Like I'm I'm willing to bet that that exists. It's just not to the consumer or level. It's like the government. Probably. Exactly. Yeah, I was having this conversation with my mother-in-law over Christmas, and maybe you have some input on this. We were talking about just kind of like just this, like the 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 rate at which technology is going to advance in the next, let's say, f uh, I think we said like 25 years. And you think 25? Huh. My my argument was if you go back 100 years to now. There was so much room for improvement on everything. Planes, you know, trains, planes, and automobiles, basically, and all the tech within it. Internet, computers, all this shit, our iPhones. Mm -hmm. If you go 25 years from now and you go 25 years back, th there's, my argument was there's not enough technology or understanding of it to make the leaps that we made 25 years ago to now, if that makes sense, or 50 <laughs> years ago to, you know, to now. So, but you're familiar with the singularity, right? I am. And so we started talking about, I was like, look, and all I was trying to, the point I was trying to make to her is like quantum computing has only gotten to a, such a point where it's not like consumer ready, or I don't think it will be in 50 years to make that big of a splash like we did from 1950 mm -hmm. to 50 years later. Yeah, I wonder why um, some of these futurists, people that try to predict the future, like what are variables... Like, how you factor in innovation. Right. Um, well, she was like, and our kids were sitting right there. She's like, you don't think that their generation is going to create something, you know, better than y'all yours did or mine did? I was like, it's not about who's going to create something. It's about there's not enough technology to help any kind of innovation. I mean, there's not the gap of technology. And Patreon, please let me know if you've got some ideas about this, because that's just how I looked at it. Uh huh. So I guess just to think it through, you'd have to factor in a little bit of AI. A ton of AI. AI, um, augmented reality. Yeah, like batteries getting more efficient. Super. Um, the doubling process and power of computing. Um, nanotechnology. Uh -huh. Like, like in other words, if they get that microchip super little, and they can just inject it to you, and it just doo -doo 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 goes in, fix the heart, do whatever it has to do, peep game, <laughs> uh, analyze some shit, doo -doo 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 -doo, go right back out, hop out the IV upload peep the data press print so it's like going through your body coming out going to the computer doing all that god damn it hops out the iv you should have written for westworld this is better right? than what they wrote in westworld oh i need to watch that shit you haven't watched it i've seen like an episode or two get the f and that's on hbo or yeah what? hbo max okay that i may not have i give you the login because you know my sleep be important i'll set you up i've been drinking this um nighttime shit it has a little bit of melatonin in it yeah 
and uh, magnesium. How many milligrams, you know? The magnesium? Yeah, or of uh, melatonin. I think only five. Okay. I'm taking some gummies right now. You fuck with magnesium? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You okay. ever take ZMA? Fuck yeah. Okay. ZMA, if you have trouble sleeping and have never man. taken ZMA, it will put you on your ass. Look here, man. I've been in the supplements game before. <laughs> it's a shady I, business. I'm not saying I'm trying to be like Alex Jones and be like, y'all got to buy the supplements, you know, Chingo Bling ZMAs. Yeah. But bro, if I ever was to get back in the supplement game, like the way Rogan has on it mm -hmm. in a way, yeah, ZMAs are definitely on the menu because here's the thing. Don't take it from me. <laughs> Do your own research. Uh, try it. Just suggestions. I mean, you're going to have to take a big old dump in the morning because <laughs> that's one of the side effects of magnesium. However, it is a game changer. All right. Besides the big dump in the morning, it's a game changer. Because if you're tired of that sleepy feeling where you just feel todo desvelado, todo apendejado, no, hombre, wey, no, I'm missing, no, hombre, I'm tired of being tired, fool. Try that magnesium with the zinc. And I think, what does the A stand for? Uh, sh zinc, magnesium, and uh, something acid. Yeah, some kind of amino acid. Yeah. But um, the one that I have, it's got like a, they, had, they made their own little formula. But there's that um, sports nutrition spot um, in Midtown next to the Starbucks. Oh, Total Nutrition? Shout out to Total Nutrition. I know the guys that own that, that franchise. What's the guy's name again? Is a, Jeff or some shit? Yeah, I don't know about that location, but the main mm. guy? Yeah, I forgot his name. Yeah. Um, well, shit. I'm going to go up there probably tomorrow, get some more ZMAs. I recommended them to my sisters. I need to see if they're on it yet. But um, How funny. What made, you, what made you get to hop on that? Oh, man. Okay, so... Quick story. Um, Sean, at one point, I think he gave me a food menu, but his shit was too like oatmeal. And I was like, nah, wait, I need pretty hard <laughs> Like, where, where the tacos at? Because this oatmeal egg whites bullshit. Yeah. Anyway, he also said, uh, get you some ZMAs and something else, something else. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Usually, you can't even really feel what the supplement is doing, but magnesium is known for like good mood, calming you, and like more restful sleep. So it helps with that repair. Mm -hmm. If you work out, if you stress, I mean, if you're tired, you need good sleep. Not that tossing and turning bullshit. Right. So you need that deep REM sleep. Yeah, and I'm 41. So props to you, Mr. 31, for already being on sleep. Because, you know, 25-year-old me, if he was listening to me right now, he'd be like, bro, you're so fucking lame. <laughs> like, God, you're old. Shut the fuck up. Why did I... Why am I going to grow up to be like this fucking dude talking about sleep? But man, when I tell you, man, if you're into like optimizing, optimization, being efficient, because you have to manage your energy, yeah. not your time. It's not all about managing your time all the time. It's about managing your energy. So how, how more efficient and effective can you be if you had a good, nice fucking sleep? Like I need to do better about drinking water, like I'm not a fucking guru. I'm not good at everything. Yeah. It's um, tough. It takes effort. Yeah. I'm just trying to, like, I get a, a lot out of the systems that we have. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I'm trying to do better about the eating part because it's been a little discombobulated. Like, it, you learn over time what the foods and what the snacks are that you just got to have on deck. Yeah. For example... Yogurt at night is a nice go-to because it's that little snack. You know, if you got a little sweet tooth, you get you some with a little strawberry on the bottom. Get that little chiboli or what's it called? Chibani. No, Chiba no? Oh, no, that's not the one we You're do. You're not that bougie? We do the... I'm not mad at Chibani. I'm kidding. No, no, I'm not mad at them. What we look at is kind of like the serving size of the uh, H-E-B one. Yeah. Plus, I support local, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so anyway, yogurt is like a must-have staple. For us, in the fridge when we got to go to H E B, it's the dinner, the H E B meals. It'll have like steak, potatoes, and broccoli, or like salmon, asparagus, and some little rice or something. We fuck with those heavy, because if I ever start noticing like, man, I'm just gaining weight again, or oh, well, I, it's because oh, you fucked up and you stopped buying them little meals. Mm. So now you're looking at, damn, what happened to that 
what happened to that taco meat Luisa made? Damn, yeah. we, it ran out. And like, yeah. is there any of that chicken salad left? And it's like, fuck, what are we doing for protein? Yeah. Hey, I know that pendejo scrambling eggs and shit for dinner because nothing was thawed out. You ain't cook it yet. So those meals are clutch. I should work at GNC the way I'm upselling y'all right now. <laughs> Total nutrition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, to keep it local. Este, got to have your protein. So for breakfast, th these chicken apple sausage links from, um, we get them at HEB. I forget the brand. HEB sells them too. I recommend those for breakfast because they're high fat, high protein. Mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson keeps, has- Keeps you satiated. And Jordan Peterson also mentioned that a lot of times when people go in with anxiety and depression to the therapist, mm -hmm. he first would tell them, I need you on a high fat, high protein, not sugary. Don't don't hit the chocolate milk to the dome fresh as soon as you hopped out the bed. Don't not, get not the, the Motopia. Don't do. Um, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Keep, yeah. Keep the maybe the white, not the chocolate Motopia. Okay. So, yeah, don't keep it sugary, high protein, high fat. And um, and he noticed that a lot of the people never came back for mental health issues. It just did something to the physiology, hormone, hormonally, it's going to be good for you. Um, keeps you satiated. So from a diet standpoint, it's good. You Fellas, make sure you're getting your protein, man. Like I tell little Joe, I probably don't really keep track. I may not even be eating enough protein, but like I worry about little Joseph. You know, he's a soy boy right now. <laughs> to the max. So he, he does uh, vegetarianism. How do you say that? It is vegetarian yeah. lifestyle. I don't, yeah. don't want to call him an ism, and it's not an ism. But uh, is it an ism? <laughs> it's the ain't that some shit? Having to watch what you say. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, I think he's he said he does it for health reasons. But I tell him, I'm like Joe, what are you doing for protein, bro? Because I'll tell him, I was like, don't do too much soy because that <laughs> that fucks up the estrogen. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, what's estrogen? I'm like, look, man, it's, it's all this shit is hormonal, bro. You're like, I'm already telling you, you got too much of it. For example, if if you're not getting enough sleep, it fucks up your hormones. Hormones is everything in your body. Um, Chingo might get on that TRT. You know what I'm talking about? I'm 41, but shit. I'm surprised you haven't, honestly. No, no, I'm not on no TRT. You gotten checked? Have you got any levels checked? Uh, testosterone levels one time as an adult recent or not not that recent it's probably about maybe two years ago yeah i went to this place and uh, it was like synergex or synergy x because once we started getting into the decks of body scans we right. start picking up the pamphlets of all the shit they offer so they're like man there's this other thing where we check your co2 or your um your vo max right you know how good of a nasty vo2 you are. max yeah shit like that that way i can know Maybe you shouldn't smoke so much. Or maybe you need to fucking get your two-mile jog in more often. Um, nah, the podcast is too good when you smoke. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm all over. I'm twitching and shit. Um, but, so you've done the DEXA, and you've done it a few times, haven't you? Did you do the VO2? No. Or any, any of the other services? No, but I would love to. And so my testosterone, I think I was a little bit more on the low end. Mm. So, so you up that red meat? It, see, that's what I, see, that's what I'm saying. I need to educate myself on what things can you do i heard squats are good oh exercise yeah for sure compound movements you know yeah. and then like things like uh like eggs you know up, up those fats having the cholesterol cholesterol is a hormone as well that helps regulate things ain't that some shit that cholesterol got a bad rap i know and got blamed for like heart disease or something yep but it starts fucking up men's testosterone levels when you start for example if i'm not mistaken it was like the uh soy industry that started putting out hit pieces, fake news, fake science on, on um, the dairy industry. Oh, yeah. Blaming butter. Mm -hmm. So they, because they made parquet, and I can't believe it's not butter, which is like margarine. Right. Which is not dairy butter. It does not come from a cow. Margarine is like vegetable oil shortening, basically, right? So to me, it's kind of processed. So the funny thing is, I grew up in a household where my mom always had country crop. Mm -hmm. and parquet and i can't believe it ain't butter because at the time they was doing fake news on butter yeah they was hating on cholesterol they were saying no yolks yeah it's all so horseshit it's all horseshit so it's proof that even the food pyramid it's been hasn't the food pyramid the, the government one hasn't it be de debunked yeah 
Has it? I don't even remember the last time I looked at it. I mean, is it still law? Like, do we still supposed to say, um, I question the food pyramid, but I don't want to go against the official narrative? I think everybody questions it at this point because you have so many, like, you have the, the carnivore zealots and you have the vegan zealots and you have the people like, it's you know, the, how, the fucking, what is the other one, paleo and uh, uh, something 30, I think CrossFitters do. I wonder, if it, 30. Was, I wonder if it was propaganda to help the... Um, like if the country had a grain surplus at the time in the silos and they needed to educate. It's like, make some propaganda, make me a chart, make me a, make it a pyramid so that we could tell Americans that uh, they need to have this much sweets, this much vegetables, this much meat, this much grains. Yeah, that's a good point. There, I know there's a story to it, obviously. If you guys know it, let us know on the Patreon and we'll talk about it because that's a fascinating one. I actually wanted to go back. You're talking about your yogurts. If y'all are listening, y'all like yogurts, y'all like snacks, there's a yogurt called Too Good, like T-W-O Good, and it's like a high-protein yogurt. Just get the plain one if you want, or vanilla, or whatever you want, and then you get the sugar-free uh, pudding mixes, the Jello pudding mixes. All right, so weigh it out. You get your uh, however many grams of the yogurt you want in your bowl, and then you get the powder that you would make uh, pudding with, sugar-free pudding. No calories, no sugar, no nothing. It's all zero. And then you just sprinkle about seven grams into however... So seven grams per whatever the serving of yogurt. And then you just whip it up. And you can have the pistachio pudding. You can have the cheesecake pudding, the lemon pie pudding. It is so good. It's sugar-free what? Is sugar-free, it? the jello. You know, the jello... Sugar-free, sugar-free jello. Yeah, the pudding packets. Mm, the pudding one. Yeah, and then you just get the, 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 oh. the little fucking pudding mix. And you mix it in your yogurt. And it is so good. Perfect. It's officially perfect. So good. Dude, you just dropped some knowledge on us, That's man. good, man. Uh, do you guys track still? Do you still track your shit? See, while you were telling your Graham story, I literally just reminded myself, Chingo, you fucked up on your system. I blame the pandemic. <laughs> I'm sure you we do. Had, you know what happens, man, is that's why it's so important to be organized and, um, and have systems. And 25-year-old me would roll his eyes right now hearing me talk about being organized in systems. Because I, I'm still messy, but I'm working on it. I'm trying to have less clothes and less sneakers and less stuff. Just less clutter. Less, man, just please less. Because yeah. yeah. over the years, we've accumulated a shit ton of costumes because we were doing all these skit, sketches and skits. And then my wife loves doing photo shoots and loves doing holiday stuff. So we've got bins and bins of decorations. She's like, uh president's day is coming up get get go get the the bin 37 uh 4a it's on row 16 it's like an ikea back there like it's like a party city yeah so we spent all this little extra bread on fucking storage um for a whole bunch of costumes and then i have music speakers in there i bought a spotlight when i started stand up and it's just i used it once and anyway um the systems when you were talking about weighing grams out um it's key like, I'm not really keeping track of my protein. Like, I'm not, not even on pen and paper. Like, okay, how many eggs did I scramble with the sausage and, you know, write down everything. Yeah. Which also, by the way, the sausage and, and like high protein, that also fits under slow carb. The Tim Ferriss right. diet, which basically is a whole bunch of um, slow carbs, like beans, no sugars, no white rice, no white bread. You get a cheat day. Four hour body, by the way. Four, oh yeah, yeah. That's the book. The yeah. four hour body. Pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty dope because I I I'm, we're jumping around here, y'all. This is what it's about. Okay, perfect. I nerded out when I flipped through that book. That's when I started to understand the science behind a kettlebell workout. Why are kettlebell swings pound for pound some of the best uh workout you could do? Like I've heard if you do just 50 a day of like a really heavy kettlebell and knock that bitch out in one like that alone man you finna walk around like your legs always gonna be sore like you'll be able to squat more and everything. man that reminds me did you ever uh hear steve maxwell on joe rogan steve maxwell he's like uh he's considered like the the kettlebell godfather he's mm. like it's, there's always like this argument of who brought the kettlebell over the United States. The Russian dude? Yeah, was it Pavel or was it Steve Maxwell? Okay. A lot of people credit 
uh, Pavel, uh, but a lot of people also say that Steve Maxwell was the guy. Was he, he like a wrestling coach in Philly or something? Yeah, yeah, shit? yeah. Uh, he, he had Maxercise, uh, yeah, Maxercise on the East Coast in Philadelphia. He had a gym. He's been on Rogan two or three times. Love Steve Maxwell. Oh, I need to listen to him. So this is a long time ago. Because um, Tim Ferriss, I think, mentioned him. Oh, does he? But, but go on. Cool. Um, well, I got I did a certification in San Antonio. He does like a round of certifications in, in the, the U.S. like once a year or once every other year. And it's not every state. It's like just like a handful of them. Is it super hard to do? Dude. Dude. Hard? It was so hard. So you're certified in that. Do you remember all that stuff? Oh, yeah. So I opened up a kettlebell conditioning class at Sugarland MMA years ago. And I started teaching classes to the people that were doing the, the martial arts programs there as well for like a year before I opened my brick and mortar place. That's what I was doing. So you doing. taught? Yeah, I, t- I taught kettlebell classes. Fucker. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know when you have time. But we need to maybe I, we don't have to film it. It doesn't have to be content. Yeah. But I need to book you for a fucking hour. It's or so some fun. Shit. Well, I, what I was gonna say is I have all of my all the curriculum, like all the oh videos. Oh my god! It's, Rob. it's 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 Steve Maxwell doing all the different videos if with you. If you thought we spent a lot of time already, <laughs> go on, dude. No, it, it was it was awesome. It was, so it was, uh, was it a one day or two day? Man, fuck politics. I like it over here at this show. <laughs> I'm learning. Dude, I think it was like a two day course. And um, it was, I forgot where it was. It was at, a, there's this place in San Antonio, uh, Rev Gear. Rev Gear, they're like a, like a producer of like pads and, and bags and all kinds of martial arts equipment or whatever. And at their facility, they were having a class. And it was two days. And at the end of the day, when the, for the first day was all like, kind of like a uh, paper, like pen and paper stuff, learning stuff, you know, terms, terminology, some anatomy stuff, I think it was. The second day when it, where it really counted was eight hours. The entire certification was eight hours. And then we had like 10 minute breaks here or there. And at the end of it, it's uh, a 30 minute, you, after you've done seven hours of working out, it was a 30 minute class basically that he led that you had that he would walk around and if you were fucking up he'd stop you and correct you and if he corrected you twice you were done he did not certify you so you could have gone through seven hours of training and done uh, almost finished your 30 minute hell he called it the class from hell and then if he stopped you twice and had to correct you twice you were out of there and there was like three or four people that he had to stop but they were so broken down from the day of working out that they, they couldn't keep the form. They just couldn't keep the form anymore. And I was like, Ugh. So it was really more that they were just out of shape, like hurt, beat up from seven hours of yeah. working out. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> and they probably could have, I mean, if you, they would have had more rest, you know, but he's, he's a hard ass. Like he's like, he's, he's a very strict about, you know, all that kind of shit. Anyway. So let me ask you this. When you got certified and you did this, what was it? Two day training? Yeah. And you did the paperwork and you did the seven hours yeah. and the hell class at the end. What? What did you learn? Like the ABCs? Like how well versed is that certification? It is pretty fucking intense. It's very... Like you uh, know a gang of shit. Yeah. Like it's really uh, thorough is what the mm. word I was looking for. Yeah. Because leading up to it, I was already interested. Like obviously Rogan was probably... The, Rogan and this guy on YouTube uh, called... I think it's Swing This is the name of the YouTube channel. I interviewed him years ago and he's been teaching kettlebell for like 15 or 20 years. Somewhere in like Detroit, I think. And uh, that's all he does. And this guy used to be a bodybuilder and he went from barbell to just strictly kettlebell. And he still looks like he's a fucking bodybuilder. Granted, he's probably he has, you know, some TRT cream or whatever, but all he lifts is kettlebells. So that got me interested in that. And then Rogan started talking more about it and he had kettlebell people on. And then I, you know, I hung around a bunch of martial arts people and all the jiu-jitsu guys, kettlebells, kettlebells. And then Max, uh, Steve Maxwell was on Rogan. And that was like, all right, I got to do this. I want to do this. And because it's fun too. Like if you have a couple bells, you can get the work out of your fucking life with a couple of kettlebells. That's it. Like Rogan says it all the time, but it's true. And then after the certification, I was like, man, you learn how to do the windmill properly. You know how to learn how to do all the presses and all the variations of, of swings. And it's, it's dope. Question. Um, does it matter where you get your kettlebells from? I think it does because if you go to Walmart and you get those real cheap plasticky ones, the handles are there. There's always some ridge that, that feels like it's going to cut your hand. Uh, people also, they like to put tape on it or something to make it to where you can grip it. You don't want a tight grip on it. You want a loose grip. It's supposed to be able to, to move in your hands. So it's a bunch of other stuff. But there's a place right here called uh, Get RX, I think, in downtown Houston. It's like right around where uh, Eighth Wonder is. Uh, they have the best kettlebells. Get RX. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, Bolt? Mm-mm. fitness or something like that bolt is a spot in town where that's probably where it, i'd either go i don't know if if it's is on it are they that different their kettlebells 
Uh, oh, they just look cool. They have cool bells, yeah. That, that's it. They have oh, really okay. cool bells. I think they also sell competition bells. So, you know, it's a sport, right? So kettlebell sport is a competition of swinging and doing different like cleans and jerks and stuff. Uh-huh. The, the competition kettlebells are literally the size of a beach ball. They're huge. Mm. So if it's 20 pounds from like one ad on it or get rx they're the ones we see at Walmart Academy. They're like small. They're 20 pounds, you know, yeah. regular looking bell. Yeah. The competition bells are like four times, or three times the size. They're huge. But it's all for the shape of like the moves you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like when you when you rack it and when you're pressing it or you're swinging it, they're just, they're bigger bells. So I think you can get those at Onnit. I don't know if you can get those at, in most places though. Well, before we do our training sessions, okay. I want to make sure that, like, in other words, you tell me, all right, bro, get you a pair of these because you're gonna be you know that's i didn't even know you like kettlebells i love kettle i'm i don't ever even see you with a kettlebell because when you post your videos at sean's like it's a it's you know which don't get me wrong i love i mean i see one over there and no like when i'm not at sean's that's what that's the type of shit i I do at least 50 a day swings just swings and then see i'm glad that we're man i love this podcast i'm glad we're having this convo (laughs) so do one because it's so crazy that you didn't even know that like I, I just never we never we talked about it briefly one time but there's another dude on youtube named phil deru you heard of him uh-uh. well he's on instagram too but he he trains a lot of like fighters and shit like that he has a picture with uh theo vaughn and uh poirier oh cool is that how you say it yeah dustin poirier uh, poirier so um so he was recommending this one swing right where it's one arm one handed you uh it's like you hiking the football mm-hmm. you swing it up but then you yank it towards yeah the high pull yeah, that one. Yeah. Man, I did some of them today. I could see how that helps with punching because that little yeah. pull resistance right mm. there, it's like, ooh, yeah. man, I better not do too many of those. Yeah, so you like... Because I'm going to have to register these hands. You swing it up and then you just pull it basically at like ear level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, there's tons of variations of moves that you don't really see because all the Instagram models and stuff, like... They'll do these shitty swings where it's kind of like a half squat, half swing, and, and you just see really bad form and technique. They're not going to get into the high pulls, the cleans, the jerks, and the or even the um, the windmill or the full uh, Turkish getup. Have you ever done Turkish getups? It's harder than a bitch. And, yeah, because um, there's like 12 movements in it to do it right. Yeah, you got to have a strong core. One of the best ab exercises is um, that little half Turkish getup, mm-hmm. like the little, the bottom part yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. So going back to my question. I guess before we have our first class, sure. All right, and you bust out the curriculum, and then I get certified, and then I it's like it's just life. fun, and then I certify people. <laughs> you start your own certification process. So basically, you tell me, all right, man, get you a pair of these because that's for all your push, like your shoulder stuff, and then get you one real heavy one for when we do this. Yeah, type yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Because when I started the classes, they didn't have kettlebells; they had a few of them. You would think most martial arts gyms should have a, and nowadays they do, but this was, you know, years back. Uh, now you can go to almost every regular gym, conventional gym and martial arts gym, they'll have a bunch of them, but they're really expensive. I know people might be listening like, man, I've looked at prices of kettlebells and they're pretty pricey. Yes. Well, that's okay. Going back to what you were saying, talking about, I never knew you liked kettlebells because I see one over there. It's like, okay, yeah, because <laughs> I, I need to make sure that. You can I, utilize I know, them. I know what I'm doing, and yeah. I buy the right shit, and I, I actually know some shit. So now that I got I got Rob, he finna show me some stuff. Two and a half years later. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe uh, I don't think you have to go with me to bolt, but I'll go that way. I can actually feel. So how heavy should my heavy one be? Your he- like the heavy one. You're gonna do just swings. You're gonna you just do your your, your heavy swings. Your uh, your goblet squats. Your uh, maybe overhead press, but probably not. Uh, so when you pick it up, you should feel your like if you were to do a, a, like a Romanian deadlift. Feel it in your glutes. Feel it in your in your in your butt and your hamstrings. If it feels like yeah, I'm doing like two or three of them, and I can feel that already getting really tough. Which one's tough. the Romanian deadlift? Like a straight legged deadlift, where you just kind of like like you're setting up to swing, and then you just stand straight up, and uh, you just okay, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you can feel like yeah, it's lighting up my glutes already, mm-hmm. and then you start swinging it, and then okay, yeah, like usually, honestly, it's probably be like thirty five to forty five is like probably going to be good for you unless you're super strong because I haven't seen you work. I mean, I see your videos work out, but if you can do like a, if you pick up a fifty plus. And that'd be great for swings, and that'll really light you up, too. It's the the little one that I have. How many pounds do you think that is? I think that one was 30. I have to find it. I don't know where it went. 
You should have added another 10 pounds, Rob. People listening, bro. <laughs> I will, uh, that's the one you do for your presses and your high pulls. You oh, know yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Those, you know, train the arms. For that yeah, punch. Exactly. That, that, that little fast twitch. It's true, yeah. People seeing you do uh, your little uh, striking sessions at Crew Bob's, you know, they know you got hands. Yeah, but you know what? Um, I'm learning that I need to hold myself accountable and I need to tighten up my systems. So I think right after this podcast, I want to say the wife and the baby, we're all going to go to HEB. And make sure we get those those dinner meals. And then also, I need to make sure our food scale has a good battery, etc. Because, or at least, I need to at least jot the protein numbers. Because... That's how this started. I asked you if you track. That's how we started on this whole conversation. Y'all aren't tracking right now, right? But you used to track before because no. you had a menu and everything. Yeah, we used to be very... Your road menu and a yeah. home menu. Y'all, these guys were strict. Bro, we got a million menus. Um, but everything got discombobulated. So I resorted back to slow carb, especially when we were in Boston. Yeah. When we were in Boston, I just made sure that there was always some beans around. Just because it was easy? Yeah, because I ain't going to lie. Like the slow carb stuff, if you do it right, it's, it, it's like good bang for your buck because it's simple. It's like, it's easy. You, you can eat Tex-Mex. Like, you can go to Chipotle, you can go to, like, if you happen to be at an airport, you know you can find you, like, a Tex-Mex spot. Get, like, fajitas and beans and peppers yeah. and onions and just no, like, flour tortilla and you can have the guac so on. Anyway, I resorted back to that so that I could still eyeball stuff and still make sure I'm getting plenty of protein, still getting fiber, and not going crazy with white rice, white bread, sugars, juices, fruit, like, sugary, sugary, yeah. sugar. Because, man, sugar, bro, especially for the Latin community, I, man, bro, if, if anybody listening, if you wanted just one, if there was only one thing you were going to do, <laughs> if you were concerned about health, if it was just, I don't want to be trying to meet all these goals and you got to drink a gallon of water and you got to take all these vitamins. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, at least beware of the amount of just processed sugar is hidden in every bun and yeah. every every slice, they sneaking that sugar in here and there, and you thinking, oh, I'm drinking a juice. I'm not. A lot of people are bodybuilders and they they drink juice. You know, I'm not saying juice is bad. What I'm saying is, if your pancreas, if you overwork that motherfucker, because insulin is a hormone. Yeah. And if you keep hitting it with them sugar spikes, your blood sugar spiking. You working that pancreas. If you become insulin resistant. Now, you know, I mean, you, you could complicate. Educated over here. I mean, educated you could, what you're talking about. And, and guess what? My daughters get their fair share of sugar. Violet likes her chocolate milk. So they, they my kids eat, you know, candy and yeah. stuff like that. They get little pieces of chocolate. In moderation. Yeah. I have a flour tortilla from time to time. Every once in a while, you having some Chinese food. Fuck it, man. Just let a little bit of white rice fall on my plate. So by no means, I mean, shit, you can see it in these, in these uh, little fat face cheeks I got right now. <laughs> by no means am I strict. So don't think I'm preaching. All I'm saying is I get concerned for my community because diabetes is a mug. Yeah. My dad got it. You know, a whole bunch of people I know has diabetes. And, um, you know, that's, that's what happens when your pancreas no longer does no longer secretes the insulin to metabolize the sugar you're pumping into it like anytime i ain't gonna lie bro i don't like if i eat a cupcake or some shit like you had a kid's party and yeah. I, andale, andale come or see me at that school like oh it's my birthday right it's my birthday and fuck it i'm like man they brought these cupcakes oh they brought pie Cuando me atasco de azúcar, when i overdo it oh my god i literally like go into like a little coma like i like I just, like a kid, like a, you know, little kids, it's like, yeah. you know I mean, he's all sugar drunk. <laughs> like, I don't feel good. It gives me like this little head drug, like that head rush. Yeah. And um, I just know like, oh, fuck, I feel it in my feet. Like I feel it in my bloodstream. Especially if you don't do it often. You know, you do it like once in a, in a blue <sighs> moon, you feel like total dog shit. And the mm -hmm. reason I brought it up too is because uh, recently Don and I were, we started using or tracking again. So long story, to, to go back real quick, the reason I know about this stuff and I'm interested in it, when I was younger, I was super heavy. I was like 280 as a freshman in high school. Not good. Doctor said a similar thing. If you don't clean your shit up, you're not going to see 18, you fat little Mexican boy because it runs in, you know, the culture and 
and it seems like you've had some family history of it or whatever. I'm like, okay, scared me, got my act together. And for the majority of my 20s, like 18 to 25, I, I lost over 100 pounds, kept it off. So I went from like 280 to like 180, 190, opened that brick and mortar business and became a little harder to be as, you know, stringent and all, and all that stuff, gained a little bit of weight, but also muscle because I love lifting weights, right? Kettlebells, barbells, all that stuff. And then was regularly around like 200. Cool. That's all good. And then, you know, started to fall off, family, kids, all that shit, um, which ironically, as we started working together more and I'd go on the road and I'm like, man, they're so, so good on the road, like with your menus and everything. I was like, all right, got to get back on tracking. And it's not the gym thing. I can go to the gym and I still do every day and lift. But if you're nutrition, you can't outrun a bad diet, you know, basically is what it comes down to. So we started because uh, we could track with like my fitness pal, like the common apps that are free that people use. But do you know who Lane Norton is? Uh refresh my memory he's a scientist but he's like a he's a competitive power lifter as well and uh he's also like a, a phd and super scientific approach to the way that he uh, eats and competes and all that jazz so his wife uh, holly baxter is also a competitive bodybuilder and science phd lady well they, they have a bunch of books and they have a, a product line and stuff but and a podcast but their most fascinating thing was an app they released like i don't know four months ago called carbon diet coach and it's, it's basically like the way Mighty Soul hires a coach to do her prepping for her competitions or whatever, or the same person that wrote y'all's menu and have, you know, all your macros and stuff. The app works as a, a teacher or as a, a nutritionist to buy science, you know, measure out, you know, your height, your weight, your fat, all that comes up with your macros, you track it. And it gamifies it in a way that almost like it uses the same rings that your Apple Watch uses to track everything. It has, you know, levels and bars, things that people like to physically see move in order to, you know, be accountable for to hit these markers that day or close these rings that day. And it's been really, it's what's been a game changer. What's the name of the app? Carbon. Carbon. Yeah. So I'll send, send you the link. It's really good. So tracking your, that, and that's why, again, like tracking uh, the macros, you know, fats, proteins and everything, it, it tracks everything down to like the smallest uh, um, nutrient, but it, just the main ones, it helps you keep a track of it because you come to find out that you do not hit your protein goals most of the days. Unless you're actually trying, there's no way most people eat like 150 grams of protein. You just don't. Is it Carbon Health or Carbon Diet Coach? The, uh, carbon Diet Coach. Yeah, it's got, it's a so silver. How, how many grams of protein should I be having? Typically, I think the rule of thumb is one per gram of lean body mass. So not one gram per, like if you weigh 200 pounds, most people are like, oh, one times, you know, so 200 grams. No, it's like one or 1 1.5 times your lean body mass. So if you do a DEXA and your DEXA is like, you have 140, uh, uh, rather like, yeah, 140 pounds of lean body mass, it would be 140 grams of protein. Okay. Uh, but roughly around there, like one times that, but even if you use your regular weight, like say it's 170, 180 or 200, like you want to try to hit that range. And once you start tracking, if you have never tracked or haven't tracked in a long time, you'll see that on a regular day, a busy person, you're lucky to get a hundred. You might get like 60 or 70 grams. You have a couple of eggs, you have your chicken at lunch, maybe a chicken at, at dinner. And it's like, oh, that was only 75 grams of protein that day. You got to make sure to be diligent to get it in. Yeah. Especially the fellas, man. Like as you get older too, like, yeah. I, I might not be hitting my, my protein goals. So like Rob was saying, you can go to the gym, that's cool, but if you're not really eating right or you yeah. don't got like a, a system, whether you're doing slow carb or you have a menu or or you're doing your own thing or you're on some keto shit, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, lo que te la pinche gana, güey. Yeah, I'm curious, man. I, I'm, I think that could be a running theme that we can check back on. For sure. Like the kettlebell stuff, how did the class go? What did I learn? How's that going? Did I buy some new ones? Because, like, I post my little workout TikToks, right? So one of my little systems is when we go to Sean, the trainer, I'll just set up my phone and just put it on the ground, and, and, and then I'm just grabbing footage in my camera roll. Then I'll go to TikTok when we're done working out, and I'll just kind of compile all the little things he made us do to music, you know, Versace Mariachi out now. And um, so anyway, sometimes there'll be a comment or two like, that's what's up, man. I'm about to get back on it myself or, or like whatever. Something that, that makes it seem like I'm open to tips, yeah. you know, or encouragement. Yeah, yeah. So I always tell them, you got this, you know, systems over goals, fuck goals. It's about systems. Or, or, I, or like if they're like, I don't know where to start, I might say, look into kettlebells. and Just building habits too. Yeah. You know? Getting your steps in. Like that's another good thing. You can always just do it with your watch or your phone. Like everything has a pedometer. Measure your steps. Try to hit 10,000 steps. It's really hard, especially now when you're locked up at home. Like between uh, 2000 and 
I don't know, what are we in, 2021? 20, between 2018 and now, like I've put, I'm 30 pounds heavier than I have been in the last 10 years. So I was like, okay, this is getting a little crazy. So just starting to track again, you can easily see I'm consuming maybe a little bit too much booze or not enough protein. I'm also not sleeping enough on top of it. Let's get that, all those habits back in place. And then you'll, you'll see how quickly, like it only took about a month or so to drop like 12 pounds. Like, okay, if I can keep this trend going, it's obviously going to get you back to where you want to be. Yeah. Um, my babysitter, Luisa, <clears throat> she always jokes. She's like, no, el, el, le ayudó la cuarentena, verdad? Le ayudó, le ayudó. Like, because now, I guess I was introspective and did my little soul searching and just really tightened up my, uh, my system. So, you know, in terms of like being introspective and knowing, okay, how are we going to control, you know, your thoughts? How do you make sure you're not going to get anxious or depressed or, or anything? Like, what, knowing how to navigate your feelings and emotions Hell yeah. and, and do you have any bitterness you know are, are you holding any grudges against people are you too arrogant like you know you have to hold yourself accountable yeah so you know this year i've done way better about becoming more handy you know what i'm saying like it was a running joke probably like when we first started podcasting like i didn't know how to do shit so now i'm like really challenging myself like okay even if it means worst case like all right, I'm going to hire somebody to do it, but I'm going to be there and I'm going I'm to peep game and I'm going to ask this motherfucker questions. Or I'm tr For example, quick story. The rental house in Katy, <laughs> the people, I was, we had something scheduled that day, but I think I had to skip out on the, yep. trainer, on the trainer or something. So I had to go to uh, Katy, which is like phew, a good 40 minutes from here. It's a little ways. And there was a leak in the garage. It's starting to fuck up some of the drywall a little bit. And I'm like, fuck, okay. All right, I had to peep where it was coming from. I think it's somehow hooked up to that water heater. Ma'am, I need to go open your attic. He goes, a little chingo bling and shit. In the attic, crawling in the fucking, walking through, the, making sure I'm hitting the beams and shit. And I'm not going to fall through. So now I found the leaky pipe. I'm taking a picture of it because I am probably need a plumber. It's not some shit. I don't know how to solder and refit is it galvanized or is it copper i don't know motherfucking shit i can only imagine you trying to do so this. i'm trying to take pictures i'm in the attic trying to be a homeowner i'm taking pictures and a la madre poof, my leg goes through the fucking <laughs> it it had dripped so much that would you slip or no it's just like you can slightly lean on some of the drywall right here and there right. like a little knee a little your foot kind of touched it it's fine in this case, it was very wet. So I couldn't see how damp it was. I'm trying to take a picture of how the pipe is leaking so I could hire somebody. Anyway, so now the plumber comes, fixes the cables and the plumbing, but he's not going to fix that hole in the drywall, right? So now right. I got to call another motherfucker, and I'm over there peeping game and shit. Oh, okay, maestro. ¿Qué, qué masa le echó? ¿Cómo le echa la masa? I'm peeping game. So I don't know how we got on this subject. <laughs> We're talking, but, but oh, I guess I guess my point is this: it feels good, Andy, to have systems, and in terms of like, um, it, it sounds nerdy as shit, but like, this is the shit I nerd out on now, which yeah. is like, Rob, can you teach me the kettlebell stuff? Yeah, like for example, um, I need to make time to either get with Crew Bob or I need to fucking join a jujitsu gym. But basically, I want to do more. Like mitt work, pads. I, I want to learn a little bit more boxing. Maybe I just at least need a shadow box. I, I at least need a jump rope. Like do something that boxers do. Um, but I want to be better at the, in the fighting game. Make sure that I at least have the wind to where some shit goes down. I can kind of hop around for a hot minute and shit. Act like I'm doing something and not be like, but at the way. <laughs> so at the very least, have the cardio to pretend you could fight. At the very fucking least. So that's where my life is right now, which is like, you know, you got some wine, you know, make sure you got some good coffee. The simple shit. What, what kind of tea? What's in your tea bin, playboy? Yeah. What's your tea game like? I just got some brain tea the other day, actually. Oh, la verga. What the fuck yeah. is that? Um, I have to, I have to, I'll send you a picture of it. We went to uh, World Market. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of shit me and Don are into as well. Like, it, it's, um, like, do you, you like tea? I, did, I didn't know I you like tea. I love tea, yeah. What do you usually drink to calm you down? Um, what I have in the stash right now, I have like a, uh, I got like a nighttime sleepy one, like catch your Z's type of one. I have like a peppermint one, a chai, 
And then there's like some other ones I really don't fuck with, like a yerba mate um, and some shit like that, like some hibiscus. Yeah, I was hoping you would mention the one that jogged my memory. I forgot what it is, but it's it's something plus like brain boost or whatever, and it helps. And that's what I'm always into, like nootropics, like what's going to help me concentrate, focus, you know. Be efficient. Yeah, zone have in. Have energy. Yeah, zone in on something. So I'll, I'll take a picture of it. But that I find that if you can find something that helps you periodically, because if you take it all the time, you build like a tolerance to it and it almost doesn't work. I don't know at this point that coffee does much, but I still love the taste of it and I do feel like the little pep, so we drink it, right? But when it comes to like even ZMAs or your 5-HTP or some kind of nootropic to get you like in the zone either to pass out or to perk up, I think it's super, super crucial. See, the thing too is like these are all chemicals. Yeah. Technically. So in the morning, I get on a chemical called caffeine. Yeah. Sometimes it's another chemical involved too, you know, it depends state to state. Depends on the day. Yeah, it depends. Some people like to call it CBD. But anyway, um, let's just say wine in the evening. Okay, well, that's a chemical. Love it. That's a chemical. It has antioxidants and all that. It's got resveratrol. Mm-hmm, whatever that was he just said. Uh, tea, I'm pretty sure those are chemicals too. So my point is this. Everybody uses stimulants. Yeah. Everybody uses uh, performance enhancers. For sure. The key is, in my opinion, as an old man, is having your little routines. What's your morning routine? You know, like on some Jordan Peterson shit. Do you make your bed? Um, you know, nighttime. Okay. Like them little house slippers I've been wearing in all the TikToks. Yeah. I'm seeing if people are, are going to start kind of almost like an Easter egg. Like, okay, what, what's with the fucking That's house funny. slippers? You know, just because we're... You know, it's just tick tocking. It ain't, it ain't nothing. It ain't rocket science. But um, yeah, you gotta have a stack. Like we have, we call it our stack, our morning stack. You know, the 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 vitamin D, vitamin uh, fish oil. You know, your fucking bone joint health one. All these different things, and just kind of learn what they are. See what you need. Like a lot of people are like, I don't really need anything, but. Then you find that if you take it, you're like, oh, I do find a slight, you know, better improvement of like my, my knees don't hurt or you don't hear that squeaky, uh, you know, crunchy feeling in your knees or your joints sometimes. You know what? I just had a little epiphany. So here's the epiphany. If you really want to optimize, pay attention to your hormone levels. And here's what I mean. Are you getting enough cholesterol? Is that in your stack? Because that affects your testosterone, which is a hormone. Are you getting vitamin D? Because that acts as a hormone in your body. Um, protein is going to affect your hormones. Your hormones affect how you feel, whether you get depressed or not, mm -hmm. um, how much energy, how strong you are. Um, are you? Sh the big one is depression. I yeah. mean, that alone. Um, and really just like... Anxiety. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Weakness, like... Are, you, are your bones brittle because you don't have the fucking minerals in your shit? I guess that's not a hormone thing. But but in general, it's like, like my dad, he don't really be, he don't, he's from the rancho. He don't be thinking like, ah, mijo, la cagué, no, toda la proteína no me la comí hoy. Like, he's not like, ah, cuántos, <laughs> cuántos gramos tiene esa concha? Yeah. He ain't worried about that shit. Nah. So my plan is, when, God willing, I make it to his age. I'm all hopefully by then. I'm already cold with the kettlebells. Yeah, I already know how to fight in multiple martial arts. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm more proficient. Like this is youngster man. He does stand up too. I met him at the jujitsu gym, Urban Jungle, because he he like recognized me. So we start chopping it up. I'm like, man, how long you been doing jujitsu? Oh, well, I'm just a white belt, whatever. He hit me up the other day. He's like, yeah, man, I'm a blue belt now. I was like, bitch. <laughs> that could have been me. Yeah, because I, it's it was far. I wasn't consistent. Yeah. I was like really out of shape at the time. I couldn't really do the sit-ups at the end of the class. Like it was just very intimidating because, uh, you know, these little kids are fucking already cold with it. So I need to get back on that shit. Yeah. Uh, and Tim Ferriss, actually, I remember him saying there's no such thing as a free uh, biological lunch, meaning that, you know, we'll consume this stuff all the time and then forget that you have to do things in order to level. Like if you were to take this stack or these stacks or these supplements or these whatever you want to call them, performance enhancing uh, supplements, but you don't correct the things that would help it if you didn't have the supplements, 
you will eventually not take the supplements and never have fixed the habit of, you know, the sleep, the water, the hydration, you know, all that stuff. And there, you can't just always depend on supplementation or any kind of biological lunch, as they call supplements. Plus, they, they say that the sunlight you get in the winter ain't the same as the Different, sunlight yeah. you get in the summer. What the fuck? I thought sunlight was sunlight. Apparently not. So if you already weren't getting sunlight in the summer and you're not taking vitamin D supplements, why you think COVID done kicked so many people's asses? Number one, they seeing it's a correlation. We don't know if it's causation, but it just so happens a lot of these groups of people who were affected adversely had low vitamin D levels. And the average American doesn't even know, to my knowledge, that vitamin D acts as a hormone in your body. You get it out the sun. It, it helps your immune system. So, you know, this is optimization talk. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was business talk. It was entertainment talk. It was health talk. You know, I Optim- like it. Optimization talk. I like it. I wish we could. I mean, I wish Onnit hadn't called. I don't know if they still do their podcast, but they had one. They do. They would do out of Onnit called uh, Total Human Optimization. Was the name of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This is like it, it. These are Chingo chats, and it's like slash. You know, the the Healthy Habits episode. Chingo chat slash talking all about real estate, being handy. Yeah, I like the direction of this. So I like I like how th- I mean. At least now we know where, the, like, how long these are going to be. We did uh, ni- almost 90 minutes. 90? Yeah, it's an hour okay. and a half. Okay, well, we better cut it off because uh, my wife's like, where is this motherfucker at? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a chingo chat, <laughs> not a marathon. Uh, I had fun. Yeah. Uh, Rob, talk to me after the show about how we're going to do, if you can help me with this business plan. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we can discuss it, and you can help me dot my, like, do the T's and the I's and all that shit. And let me know when we're doing our kettlebell class so I can... I'll, I'll document it when I go buy them. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm gonna let my wife know it's it's gonna be some money missing because I'm finna go buy some kettlebells. <laughs> yeah, price them out though. Anybody that's listening that's interested, you've wanted, always wanted to get one, go to Academy and see if you like the way those handles feel. Because sometimes too, the handles they're almost like shaped like your like your fucking man purse over yeah, here. The fanny, like the fanny, like they're really wide. I like the ones that are even with the bell, like they're not super wide and, and you know uh, awkward. Uh, go to academy dicks uh, and then try to find a place that just sells equipment sporting equipment like that like uh, get rx or what was the other place uh bolt? bolt but yeah let me know about that get rx yeah I'll, I'll send you the link to them mm-hmm. and then just you know try them out check them out and price them so that you know that you're getting a good good deal and next time we need to talk more about that trt stuff um you, if you're familiar with oh, all yeah. that yeah because i'm 41 like a motherfucker i'm not trying to buy i'll be out here motherfucking low testosterone levels and shit believing the food pyramid uh eating country crock and shit motherfucker scared of cholesterol fucking up my hormones up no because my homeboy from victoria he he hit me up we were talking about something and he mentioned that um he's he's taking a low dose that they they did his test they took blood and they let him know he's doing like the cream the I, topical? I, didn't, I didn't ask him all that he's but he's taking it in the booty <laughs> like the like the COVID test. Yeah, he's taking his testosterone. I didn't ask him how he okay. was taking it, okay. but basically he said they got him on a real low, little weekly thing just to supplement. But he's also doing stuff, you know, like you know, working out and trying to. Yeah, you got to do all that. And I, I mean, I pers- I know a lot of people um, that compete or whatever that do do testosterone just because it helps them as they get older in age and they do these like um, masters divisions where you're like forty plus, you know. You got to think a lot of these people have low low testosterone and they just supplement with topicals or injections or whatever. And it's just good for your life overall. Would you you not rather have more energy and be more vibrant? Yeah. You sound like that commercial. (laughs) Like New Gen X or whatever the fuck it's called. That stupid ass commercial. All right, guys. I enjoyed the chat. Uh, Hey, holla at us and shout out to all the patrons, man. If you want to sign up, hit us up. Keep keep the shows coming. Uh, this is something new we're trying. So hit us up on patreon.com forward slash red a la madre. We're not we're, this ain't a God damn it, Chingo. How much of that how much of that C B D did you have? I got confused. So so, so we this should, is for our current patrons. Is, yeah, we're gonna put this one out for everybody. So surprise, new show for everyone. And then going forward, these yeah. Chingo chats are gonna be on the ten dollar tier. And then uh, we're gonna have some other content coming as well. So just keep an eye on the page. I'm sure you'll get a notification of the changes. And if not, uh, you'll see the changes whenever you uh, we see you see posts. So this will for be sure. for everyone first. For sure, and hopefully we get a new set out of it. Yeah. Peace.